Welcome back. Pleasure to be here. I'm uh, happy to talk to you about this book. This is basically about how the Trump presidency and Donald Trump himself had no interest in maintaining a functioning government through the transition of the previous administration. And you've said that only Donald Trump could make a book about bureaucracy interesting. Yes. Can you just explain he's, that real he's quick? He's electrified the material. So, <laughs> so the way he did it is great. Uh, that that he's, he did it by starting out um, firing the 500 people who were supposed to handle his transition the day after the election. So they're supposed to go in and learn how the government works. And there are people waiting to explain to them, like, how the nuclear arsenal's managed or how we stop the Ebola virus from becoming a pandemic. And they just did not show. So when I realized I had a book and that this material was very good, when I realized I was the first person to talk to the person who handled the nuclear weapons, that like nobody had bothered to get the stuff. And to this day, you can wander around. And, and they've, never, they've never taken the time to have the thing explained to them because he has no interest whatsoever in it. And then the question is, like, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean if the president who's supposed to be running this two million person operation actually does not care? or wants to dismantle parts of it. And I think what it means is like, there are all these risks that the government manages. I mean, some are really obvious, like you don't want nuclear bombs going off when they shouldn't go off and you don't want viruses spreading, but you don't want like the research that's happening so we can grow food in a different climate not to happen. And there's all this stuff. And so that was, that was the beginning of the thing for me. It was like these risks are all more probable because he's not there. And, you know, obviously he spends a lot of time uh, attacking sort of what government means and, and the people who choose government as a life. And a lot of these people are, um, you know, these are civil servants. These are uh, bureaucrats. You saw them in the impeachment hearings, right? The minute you see them, you realize, like, the deep state is just people who know what they're talking about. Right. Right? It's, that's it. That's it. There's no deep state. <laughs> yeah. I promise you, I was there. It's not there. There's, there's no, very, you, there's there's no very, secret elevator there's that goes no, down? It's a very shallow state. You, uh, uh, you, uh, you added to this book uh, in the paperback version, you wrote about uh, Art Allen. Is that the name? So that's right. So you see, so when the government shut down in, uh, in the beginning of the year, um, 800,000 people were sent home and told they were inessential. Uh, so I asked for a list. Who are these inessential government workers? And it wasn't a whole list, but it was a whole big list. And I didn't know what, I said, I want to find one of these guys. I took the name at the top, Arthur A. Allen. Was, this is how it works as a reporter. You I, just it, take the first name. It's kind of how I roll. <laughs> yeah. But I call him up. What do you, you know, you're an essential. What did you do? He's, a, he's an, the only oceanographer in the Coast Guard Search and Rescue Department. He'd gotten there in the late 70s. He, you know, he kind of stumbled into the government. He finds after a few years that everybody's asking him questions that he, if he doesn't know the answer to, like, nobody knows the answer to. And they're kind of science questions, like, how long can someone survive in the water in a survival suit before they die of hypothermia? He starts answering these sorts of questions, and he, he goes out and he sees, he went, goes and watches a search and rescue, and he sees um, a storm come across the Chesapeake Bay and a boat get lost with this little girl and a mom on it. And when I, was, went to this, when I was sitting in his living room talking to him about it, he said, you want to know why I do what I do? And he pulls a clipping out from his, like a yellow newspaper clipping out from his bookshelf. And it's about this mom and her daughter who died because the Coast Guard couldn't find them. And he realizes that what we don't know, that we need to know, is how that boat drifts after it's capsized, that these people were, were on. And he spends his career, and this is what he's been doing, and this is like an inessential worker in the minds of the Trump administration, is he spends his career tossing stuff out into the Long Island Sound and studying how it drifts, depending on what it is. An upside down sailboat, uh, a fat person, a, 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 a person on a life raft, or whatever it is. And what, the, 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 what you need to understand is that at any given time, there's an unbelievable amount of crap floating on the ocean, and a surprising amount of it are Americans. Like, yeah. Americans have a, we have a gift for getting lost at sea. <laughs> yeah. like, no, no, I'm just deadly serious. Like, like, 13 people a day on average, 10 get rescued, 3 die. And a lot of times they die because they don't know how they drifted. He, he makes a science of it. And, he, and, and when, he, when he teaches the Coast Guard how you follow an object that's drifting at sea, they start finding people who never would have been found. Day after, days after he releases this information to the Coast Guard, a 300-pound man runs out of his window of a cruise ship into the ocean, uh, and, is, and, and three hours later, uh, they find he's gone. They know where he, they, they end up finding out where he, when he went off the ship. That man is dead at any time in human history, and because of this guy's work, 
they plucked him out of the ocean. And this is a guy who thousands of people are alive because of his work, and nobody knows who he is. And he has no impulse to market it or tell anybody about it. And that's, what our, that's what's in the government. Uh, and that's what we're telling, pe we're telling these people they're inessential. It's crazy. And do you think because we have a president who obviously, uh, you know, is a braggadocio, and these people have great humility, do you think he values them less because they're not... Yeah, because they don't know how to sell themselves. Yeah. It's just the, they're almost the opposite of him. They, they know how to do things. Yeah. And they, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's true. And, and, and they... And, 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 they know, and they know things. Yeah. And they're, they're like the key to the future, but they don't, know how to, they don't know how to persuade you that they're important. They don't know how to tell their story. Well, it's very nice yeah. uh, that yeah. you're telling their story. I'm so glad you added that to the book. And thank you so much for yeah, being here. It's always you. a pleasure. Uh, thank you. Michael Lewis, everybody.